Welcome, Houdini audience all around the world. In part three of the series, we look at the spiral generation in much more detail. I got a bit of a head start for the Ammonite by using the setup from Unishiro. If you want to know more about the mathematics behind defining the shape and spiral, please watch his great tutorial. He's releasing his scenes in the Apprentice version of Houdini, which is a bit of a bummer. But nice thing was that this setup is basically only a script, so it was easy to convert it to work in the indie version of Houdini. As I just had to copy and paste the script and rebuild the simple interface. I also had to modify his setup a little bit. With this setup, it was not possible to control the diameter or size of the spiral, so I made sure it always has a size of about 1 to 2 units. This is a common practice in many procedural modeling setups. And now the game dev extensions of Houdini include Axis Align, which has this option too. I actually made my own make unit size when I made this setup last year. Let's look at the interface for creating the spiral shape first. A, B, C and D are the parameters of the formula used to create the spiral. Please refer to Unishiro's tutorial for that, but I will show you what it does in a minute. 2, here where I wrote 2. Num lets you set the number of points the spiral is made up from. I also included the possibility to trim the start and end. Delete start points, delete end points here. Number 3 lets you set the scale of the p scale attribute. I also included a ramp here to have more artistic control over the sizes. And at 4 here, down here, the C and D parameters up here will wiggle the spiral. Here I implemented also a ramp to stretch the spiral vertically, as you can see here. The copy to points node will use the p-scale and the orient attribute when copying a shape to a point. This is basically what you see here. That's a copy to points node. So p-scale is driving the size. This is why the boxes are getting bigger here. Now about the add orient that also is used by the copy to points node to uh, orient the shape. For that we need a function or node to analyze the curve. The curve frame solution I implemented here is the one from Animetrics. I think his HDA collection is one of the best Houdini assets and tool resources. Some are actually quite advanced, but they are all very production orientated. Any metrics can be found on Patreon too. Did I mention yet that I can also be found on Patreon? So, what is a curve frame? Curve frame basically analyzes a curve and creates various attributes normal, tangents, bitangents, orient, and transform, etc. More about curve frame in a later, more detailed chapter of this tutorial, just about that. We only need to use p scale and the fabulous orient attribute here. We don't need normals or tangents, etc. A orient defines the rotation of an object in 3D space. It is not human readable, at least I can't visualize it in my head, but compared to Euler rotation, it's more, mm, let's say, reliable and universal. p scale is the size of a point. And p scale and orient are predefined Houdini attributes and are also used for particles. So, as I don't only want to show slides in that silly program, um, let's use Houdini here. Let's dive into this node and I can show you the script. Actually, it's up here. It's not that long. Pretty cool. Um, like I said, I nicked that from Unishiro. And let's go back up two levels. This is the interface that um, we get and we can change the parameters. And C and D, yeah, you need C to get D to do something, wobbles the spiral. 
And I created actually something to be able to do stuff like this. Uh, let's zoom out a bit. So you get like a snail type spiral. This parameter changes the diameter. So for that, I actually need to show the preview. And now you can nicely adjust the diameter of the um, of the circles. Make really crazy stuff. And um, here's the p-scale attribute. And let me also show you the orient attribute. It has got, it's a quaternion, it has got four um, floating values, and you see it's really not human readable. I don't know what it means. Anyway, um, let's go back to the presentation. When copying a 2D shape onto a curve, you have to decide where to put the pivot and how to orient the shape. If you put it in the middle, you will get issues when the angle, and in this case, the diameter of the circle being distributed, create self-intersections. The solution is to have the pivot on the side and have the circle always on the outside. This obviously only works on certain curves and will not work when the curve changes direction. But for a spiral like the ammonite, this will work just fine. Thanks for watching.